Hey folks! Okay, this time around I want to talk about higher order functions. So these are just functions that take other functions as parameters. So you can pass a function to another function as a parameter and that function can run it or analyze it somehow or pass it off to some other function. So we're just going to play with a variety of different ways to make use of this. All right, we saw this earlier when we were looking at uh, the and rest, where we were playing with uh, creating some recursive functions. The apply function allows you to provide the name, uh, a, a function, so if you like the symbol for a function, for instance, and a list of arguments to use as parameters. And it calls that function passing that list of arguments. So if I wanted to go through and um, well, let's actually try that out quickly. Let's try and apply. And if we say let's run plus on the values 1, 2, 3. Right, it goes through and runs that using the 1, 2, 3 as arguments. Or, you know, apply, uh, I don't know, let's apply cutter to the list 10, 20, 30. Oops. Da, 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 da. Oh. Uh, what have I provided here? Ah, okay. So, cutter expects to get a list as its argument, and apply expects to get a list that contains the argument. So I actually need a list inside a list here to do this correctly. So I have to pass... So the arguments that are being applied, or that cutter is being applied to, is the list 10, 20, 30. Okay, there we go. That looks more like it. So, we can go off and pass a function as a parameter to apply and send it some data values to use or a list of data values to use and it calls the function on those values. All righty. Um, another example is the map hash function that we looked at earlier where it you give it some function and it runs that function on every pair of or every key value pair in a hash table. There's another one where we can specify I want to sort some list of values and we specify what operator to use. So if we try a sort, and I might actually need to specify what kind of data I'm expecting the result as, but let's give this a whirl. 522, so I'm saying sort and use the less than as the comparison. So it goes through and, and sorts in ascending order and if I try that again using the greater than, it should sort in descending order. So again, I'm passing the function that I want to use for comparison as a parameter to my sort function. All right, so there's a variety of different places where we wind up using these. We're going to come up with some more creative uses of them very soon. Um, what we're going to look at are creating functions that build other functions and then in turn pass those off to be executed. So when we, uh, when we do that, the new functions that we build in the Lisp code will be anonymous sort of unnamed functions. So we have to pass them as parameters to something else since we can't call them by name in the source code. All right, so apply, we just ran through a couple of examples there where we say apply, give it the uh, function that we want to run, and we give it a list of data values. And basically what it's doing is just tucking that plus in as the first element and running it as a function, right? It's pretty much what's going on. So there are a variety of times when it can be cleaner to say, apply some function to a list. Um, we'll look at a variety of different circumstances fairly shortly. A couple of other variants that are useful. Fun call is very much like apply, except that instead of providing the arguments in a list, we just provide them directly in the function call. So for instance, if we wanted to do, let's use our same example. Let's say I wanted to do a fun call, but I wanted to do the sum of the values one, two, and three, we just provide them directly. Right, as opposed to apply, where we said, let's do it and provide the three of them in a list. So, very similar. Another variation that we're going to look at in one second here 
is eval, where we give it the entire expression as a list, and it goes off and runs it. This is going to be useful in cases where we build the function that we want to run in, in Lisp, so we actually have code that builds that function, and then we pass it off to eval to basically say, okay, well, what does this do? So this is the, uh, or at least some of the ideas we're going to be playing with. So eval, again, as we went through, it just goes through and evaluates the entire expression. So assuming the expression is given to you as a list. So just a, a, again, a variety of different ideas. Here we're going to create a variable that contains this list that's got a symbol for a function and has a symbol for a variable. So it builds this list, square root of a. Then we'll go through and define a value for a and we'll evaluate e. So we're gonna go through and evaluate that expression. So it's going off and saying, okay, I'm gonna run this Right, I'm going to evaluate square root of a, which of course by this point, since a now exists, is going to be uh, 4. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, I don't think that last one is actually right. I think we should be returning 7, but let me just... Uh, let's go through this. Def var e the list of the square root of a, symbol a. So if we look at what e is, again, it's this list square root a. So if we go through and declare a and evaluate e, yay. And if we set f a to 49 and we evaluate e, how about we evaluate e? We get seven, right. So. <laughs> Just to confirm a typo in the slides there. Oh, and I didn't show you any of that. Let's give that one more try. So <laughs> this is what I just went through and did just to confirm what was going on. Uh, we created our def var e is this list, exactly what we just went through on the slide. Uh, just checked e to make sure that it was actually the, uh, the square root. We went through and created our a, evaluated e, which is going to go through and do the square root of a and then change a and do our evaluation again and it changes the value of e to 7. Alrighty. So a few more examples of higher order functions. Map lets you run a function a number of times but you're going to give it the parameters in lists. So what we'll do is if we've gotten so let's say a function that takes two parameters we'll give one list that has the first argument or a whole bunch of the first arguments, and another list that's got the second arguments. So if I was, let's say function foo takes two arguments, and, or pardon me, here we've got a function foo that takes three, uh, da, 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 da. right, it's taking three arguments. I'll get myself right here. So we've got a function that takes three arguments. So what we're gonna do is pass three lists to map. One, that's going to be the values to use for the first argument, another list that's going to be the arguments to use, or the, the values to use for the second argument, and a third list that's going to be the arguments to use for the third argument there. So what's going to happen is when I run map, I'm going to say, please build a list out of the results. The function I want you to run is foo, and here are the data values. The first time, I want you to run foo of one, two, and three. And once you're done with that, I want you to run foo of 10, 17, and four. And we could have you know three values in each list, four values in each list, five values in each list, and it's just gonna keep running foo over and over again, grabbing one element from each of the lists. So slightly different again. So if we, let's say, give that a try, let's try map, and we'll build a list out of the results and how about we'll make our function cons. And so we'll give a list of the heads that we want to cons onto things. So let's say one, two, three. And we'll give a list of the lists that we want to cons things to. So let's say uh, 10, 11, and 20, 21, and I don't know, 30, 31. And it goes through and it takes that first one and cons it to the 10 and the 11. So it grabs that. 
and then it causes the 2 to the 2021, and it grabs that, or creates that. Causes 3 to the 3031, and creates that, and then gloms them all together into a list. So, map is another interesting one that we can play with. Uh, map list is uh, yet another interesting one. What it does is runs a particular function on an entire list, and then the tail of the list, and then the tail of that list, and basically just chopping off the head each time and running the, the function again. So for the length function that we're showing here, we're going through and saying, okay, well, let's run it and grab the, uh, the front element. Or, pardon me, uh, we'll run it and get a length of 3. We pull the 10 off and run it again and get a length of 2. We pull the next argument off and run it again and get a uh, you know, length of 1. So, if we want to go through and try map list on... Let's try cutter this time. So, we'll give it a list of just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or some such thing. So, it should go through and give me... The first thing it should give me is the list of everything minus the one, and then it pulls off the one and gives me the list of everything else, and we just keep going on. Smaller and smaller lists, right? The first time we call it, we get two, three, four, five, and then with the one gone, we get three, four, five, and then with the two gone, we get the four, five, with the uh, four gone, we get the five, etc., etc., etc. Last call is just uh, that one element list. So, there are a ton of different higher order functions that Lisp provides, and Depending on what we're trying to accomplish, we'll pick one or another of them. Map car is just another one that you provide a function and a list, and it runs that function on each element and creates a list of the results. So if I was to go through and say map car, and let's just use the minus, and let's take our handy dandy one. Oops. Ah, one. Oops, I'm not showing you this, am I? So we'll try map car, and we're going to use the, the minus operation, the negate, negate operation, and we'll give it a list of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it should just go through, apply the negative to each element in there, and give me a list of the results. Right? So we get negative 1, negative 2, etc., etc., etc. So again, all sorts of different higher order functions that we can play with. Reduce is one of the interesting ones that's going to crop up later on. With this one, we expect to get a current value and then a list of next values to process. And we're going to expect a function that operates on two parameters. And what it does is runs the function on those first two parameters, gets the result, and replaces the front two values with that result, and then runs on the rest. So. If we were going to go through and say something like reduce, and we'll apply plus to this list of values 10, 5, 17, 20, it's going to run the plus on the 10 and 5 and replace them with a 15 and then pick up again. So then it's going to run plus on the 15 and 17 and replace those with the 32 and continue on, right? Run plus on the 32, 20 and give a 52. And at that point, there's only one thing left in the list, so it stops. So, Reduce is yet another interesting beastie. So, where we're going to go from here is to start writing code that writes code and passing the code we've created off to these higher order functions to run. So, this is going to wind up giving us some very interesting behavior. Again, as soon as we start creating situations where our program can write and run its own code, as it's running, you can get some very interesting behavior. So that'll be what we play with next.